We're going to be working on some geometry problems, specifically on uh, relationship between angles formed by intersecting lines. Now, the first thing that we need to do to be able to work with the measurement of angles between intersecting lines is knowing some geometry facts like the measurement of the angle of a straight line. So for a straight line, it's going to equal to 180 degrees because in a straight line like this, imagine we have another line somewhere here and if we're going to rotate this line from this end to the other end of this line it forms an angle and that angle is equal to 180 degrees another number fact or geometry fact that you need to know is the intersecting line that is perpendicular to each other and when this happens we'll have a 90 degree angle so we know that every perpendicular line will have an orthogonal angle or 90 degree angle somewhere here and that is equal to 90 degrees. So these two geometry facts will be helpful in understanding how to solve problems involving relationship of angles in intersecting lines. Take a look at this diagram over here. Now there are several letters, dots, and arrows that we are seeing in this particular diagram and to be able to understand geometry as i've mentioned math is like a foreign language that you need to um, understand and you need to learn and just like learning a foreign language you need to know how to read the symbols that we use in mathematics and for today we're going to be using some uh, um, geometry symbols or math symbols to denote angles lines and uh, some parts or some geometric um, figures in geometry. So we're going to start with how to uh, write line in geometry. So let's say that we're working on line FB and line FB is represented by this line right here from point F to point B and to uh, write line FB in symbol form we can use this symbol in denoting um, lines in, uh, in relations or in relationship with uh, the given points in our figure. So this is line FB, or you can also write it as line BF, and it doesn't matter if you interchange the two letters, they will still be the same. So this is how we write line segments in geometry. Now let's say we're going to describe this angle in this diagram. So we know that the three dots or points that connect that connects this particular figure is letters A, F, and B. So in geometry, we can call this as angle AFB, or you can also write it as angle BFA. So as long as F is in the middle, because the letter F is the point that makes up the angle measure of this particular angle that we're looking at, we can write it out as this symbol in geometry. So instead of writing angle using letters, we can use a symbol or this particular symbol to denote an angle in geometry. So these are the two notations that we're going to be using in uh, our lesson today. And the reason why you need to know and get or be familiar with uh, these symbols is because sometimes problems in geometry are not written descriptively. So you need to know the symbols because sometimes they use symbol in writing out the questions in geometry similar to this one. So let's say that the measurement of angle AFB is 70 degrees and the measurement of angle AFE is 40 degrees. If you don't know how to read these symbols, answering this particular problem could be a little bit challenging. But since we already know that angle AFB connects the letters A, F, and B, it's equal to 70 degrees and the measure of AFE is equal to 40 degrees we're looking for the measurement of angle BFE and angle BFE is this particular angle formed by connecting B F and E or E F and B so mathematically all we need to do to be able to find the measurement of that angle is to add the two angles given in our problem so the measurement of angle AFB added to the measurement of AFE which is 70 degrees and 40 degrees respectively is equal to 110 so this is the measurement of our angle BFE using or knowing that we can read symbols in geometry. Now let's say we're using the same set of diagram 
and same set of given angle, but this time instead of finding BFE, we're going to look for EFD. So we know that AFB is 70 degrees and AFE is 40 degrees. Now if we're going to be looking for angle EFD, this particular angle can be found by knowing on the relationship between angle 70, angle 40, and angle X. So notice that we are forming a straight line in this particular angle and we know that a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So if we're going to simply add the two given angles and subtract it from 180, we'll be able to find the angle that we're looking for. So angle EFD is there for 180 subtracted from the sum of the given two angles. So we'll have 180 minus 70 degrees plus 40 degrees is equal to 110 degrees. And by subtracting them, we know that angle X is equal to 70 degrees. And if we add them all up, 70 plus 70 plus 40 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So this is how we use our geometry facts and algebra in answering problems in geometry similar to this one. Now another, another number fact or geometry fact that we're going to be using today would be the vertical angles. And the vertical angles by definition are basically two intersecting lines and the angles that are formed by the angle opposite to each other will be vertical angles. So this is what we call as the vertical angles in geometry and in this particular intersection we're forming two vertical angles, which is this two angle and this two angles that we are seeing right now. So this is an example of vertical angle, angle one and angle two, because they are opposite each other, we call them vertical. And another thing that we need to know about vertical angles is that the one property that you need to remember about vertical angles is that vertical angles are congruent to each other, which means angle one is congruent to angle two. And congruent means same angle measurement and same size. So this is what we use as the congruent symbol in geometry. And we use this term a lot in geometry because congruent is describing um, equal or same shapes and sh same sh sizes of geometric figure. So now that we know what vertical angles are, if we're going to be applying this concept in this particular geometry problem, if angle one is 80 degrees and we need to find the measurement of angle two, we know that vertical angles are congruent. So if this is 80 degrees, this is also going to be 80 degrees. So therefore, if angle one is 80, angle two is definitely 80 degrees as well. Now, another relationship that we can work with is this particular angle and we know that we are seeing a straight line in between angle 2 and x. So we know that x is simply 100 degrees because 180 minus 100 is equal, I mean 100 minus 80 which is angle 2 is equal to 100. So this is how we use the relationship of this angle using vertical angles similar to this one. Now by knowing these geometry facts we'll be able to answer more complex um, relationship between angle measures similar to the next example that we're going to be working on. So in this example, we're going to look for angle X, angle Y, and angle Z. Given that 150 degrees is on that side of that angle measurement and also 35 degrees. So to find angle X, we know that the relationship between x and 150 degrees is a straight line and a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So that means the missing piece of the puzzle for this particular relationship is a, um, 30 degrees. So if you subtract 150 from 180, it's going to equal to 30 degrees. Now to find angle Y, another relationship that we can establish is that angle X is vertical to angle Y or they form a vertical angle and we know that vertical angles are congruent. So if angle X is 30 degrees, angle Y is also 30 degrees. So now that we have a complete set of angle measurement, we just need to look for angle Z. And to find angle Z, you can look at it different ways or several ways. And if I'm going to uh, find a straight line connecting to Y, 35 degrees and X, we'll be able to solve 
angle Z by adding angle Y, which we know is 30 degrees. So 35 plus 30 degrees subtracted it with 180 degrees is going to equal 215 degrees. So that means angle Z is equal to 115 degrees by knowing the relationship of 35 degrees and angle Y. So this is how we use relationship between angles in answering some geome um, geometrical problem. So if you've learned um, something from this lesson, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.